Hello and welcome to Mish Music Now. I'm Michelle Weir and today I am going to define, describe, and demo ways that you can learn how to practice more efficiently at the piano. Not really that glamorous a topic, right? Practicing. Uh, yet, listen to this. It is really important. Learning how to practice efficiently is one of the best gifts that you can give yourself. I find with my students of past years, which have been many, uh, people are not really that intuitive about knowing strategies to practice well. So what happens is people will tend to just bang their head against the wall on something, they get blocked, and then they try to push their way through it. And what they end up doing really is practicing a bad habit. So they're like ingraining this bad habit over and over again, and then it's like, three times harder to undo that later. Um, so there are, you know, 10 to be specific strategies I wanna talk about today that are just global jazz piano practice strategies. They're gonna be all geared toward playing chords or patterns in all keys. So what I'd like to do is present to you 10 different strategies for how to practice well and play well at the piano. All right, number one, practice the piano musically. Don't just clunk. There's no reason you can't make some music out of simple exercises like that. I mean, it's not supposed to be a work of art or a concert, don't get me wrong, but you can touch the piano. We love our piano, right? Let's touch it beautifully and let's notice what we're playing when we're playing it. Oh, did you notice I played that top note a little louder? You might want to check out another session, by the way, called Don't Hug the Piano because I talk about this there. Um, yeah, use your sustain pedal. Um, uh, practice with a dynamic that sounds attractive, you know, instead of just clunking loudly. Number two, repetition is your friend. It's all about repetition, 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 and repetition. So um, just get used to the idea that you're going to do something, you're gonna think it, you're going to notice it, you're going to find it, and then you're going to repeat. Because we have to get up to the speed of music. So practice repetitively. Even if you're practicing a song, take snippets of the song and drill them as needed until you're comfortable with them, then go back to the beginning and pass through that passage you just practiced. Number three, toggle. Toggle a lot. Toggle two, toggle three, toggle four. What does toggle two, three, four mean? Especially if you're an international viewer and English is not your first language. Toggle means to go back and forth between two different activities. So take a look at the piano. In toggling, we want to take something that we're working on like a chord voice and then move to another version of it in a different key and then toggle the two. Just go back and forth like this. Eventually, you know, you are looking to get some speed on it because music sometimes goes up to, you know, faster speeds. So if you're going to go through all keys, Practice two and then go to two more. And uh, similarly with progressions. And by the way, I'm using voicing P1, which is position one, which you can find a video about on Mish Music Now. So here's my key of C. And then here's my key of F. Back here, see if I can remember it. Now, where was that? So, you just do two at a time. When you're pretty good at two at a time, do three at a time. Key of F, B flat. And then at that point, go back to the beginning, do it again, maybe two in every key. And then the 
best thing is when you can do four at a time. Uh, let me just do a single chord. I'll do a dominant seven chord. Because four at a time uh, is, you know, one third of all your keys. So you're already a third of the way through. It's very satisfying to think that way. So here it is, C, F, B-flat, E-flat, C, F, B-flat, E-flat. Then go to your next four keys, which will take a while, right? Like, okay, where is it, where is it? But then you get speed on those four keys, and you know, before you know it, you've gone through all the keys. And then, with the idea of practicing and toggling back and forth between two, three, or four chords or keys, you also are going to have a lot of success if you keep your hand into a certain shape when you do it. If you're doing repetitive practice where it's the same voicing or set of voicings, keep your hand in the same shape. I call it the claw. It's a little like a jello mold, which... I don't think I've ever seen a jello mold, but I know what it is, and I know it's a mold, and you put a, the gelatinous stuff in there, and then later, you know, it becomes jello. And uh, the jello's got a little bit of firmness. It certainly has form, right? It's not tight, though. That's kind of like what we want with our hand, maybe a little firmer than jello, but not too much. And um, take a look at the piano. Let's say I'm going between C and F. Well, wow, it's like exactly the same shape here. So why, so why can't I just hold my hand in that same shape? Because if I relax, I'm gonna have to like, oh, where is it? But if I hold it, there it is, the claw. That's the shape of that voicing. Now, when we go to B flat, then E flat, my hand may need to move forward a little bit, but it's still the same shape. Let me make one thing really, really clear about this. The claw, or the idea of holding, you know, a little bit of gentle firmness in your shape is a miracle for a lot of students. I have seen people have the biggest aha moments where they took forever to find their next chord. You know, it can seem like forever for some people. And when they would be willing to hold the shape from one chord to the next, suddenly they could find it and they could access it really pretty quickly. So it's a winner, don't forget that one. Number five, don't start in the key of C. Just don't start there, because what key do you want to practice in first? C, because it's easiest, so don't do it. Start in a different key each day. Otherwise, if you start in a single key like C, you're going to get very good at the next few keys after that, and then you're going to get to G flat and D flat and B and stuff, and you're going to be sunk by that time. So start in G flat some days. Yes, it's a little harder to start there probably at first because we don't use that key center very much, you know. But uh, so what? That's, the, that's why you're practicing, right? So work it out, toggle two chords. Play G flat, then B. G flat, then B. Or if you're going up half steps, go G flat, G. And just toggle whatever you're doing. Toggle two, then toggle three or Go straight to four, and uh, it'll work out fine. Number six, practice with a metronome to greatly improve your success rate at playing the voicings that you're trying to play. It's not about playing in tempo. It's not about working on your groove. It's not about working on your time. The metronome is just a vehicle to make sure you can find that chord that you want to find when you want to find it. Because music is not going to wait for you. When you're ready to play a gig or play with other people, people are not going to stop and, you know, like, um, yeah, it has, okay, oh yeah, they found the chord now, great. It, you know, people don't wait. So um, the metronome tells you if you've got something you need to work on. So imagine, you know, I'm a, met a human metronome. <laughs> You know, okay, there's one I need to practice, right? Um, 
So you want to use the metronome that way. Uh, you don't have to work on speed. You don't have to get the metronome way up fast or anything like that. Just use it at whatever tempo is feels appropriate for you at the moment and uh, see if you can go through all four keys that you're working on with no stopping in between. Then work on half of the key centers, six of them, then work on all 12 of the key centers and see if you can get through it all without stopping. And if you do get hung up in the middle, stop the metronome and go fix it and go back and try it again. Number seven, um, optimize your practice time. You know, as I started with in this video, um, you don't want to practice just one thing. You might as well make it musical as you practice. So while you're practicing, you're going to optimize by adding in more elements that you might as well throw in into the practice uh, because it'll just get you where you want to go faster. So here is, I'm playing with the top note a little louder. And here it is playing with the sustain pedal. A lot of us might need practice using the sustain pedal if you don't have a background as a piano player. So why not use that? Um, if you're getting pretty darn good at these, maybe you do different ones. Maybe you do. practicing some repetitive voicings, uh, you could try playing them in rhythm. And then you practice your bossa nova pattern at the same time. Or you could practice your swing feel walking bass line. things like that in the Mish Music Now videos. Be sure to check back. Dare I say subscribe, and then you'll know when new ones come out. Number eight. Here's an unusual concept, but I think it's a cool one. I use it for myself sometimes, and it really helps. It's a mindset thing. And the mindset is make it look easy. Okay? Because, um, you know, I did this other video for Mish Music Now called Don't Hug the Piano. And the reason I did it is because a lot of people get in and they crouch in too close to the keyboard and the reason they do it is because they're just so almost hyper focused and trying so hard to find those voicings it's ironic because they're trying so hard to focus that they lose focus and they actually start to get blocked too much uh, trying and, and frustration and suddenly you're cut off from your sense of oh i can do this this is easy so if we just practice telling ourselves, you know, what would this look like if it were easy for me? And just sort of, you know, even saying that out loud immediately might, you know, change your posture a little bit. Um, if you're speaking, it may change your tone of voice. It may make your hands and your shoulders and everything a little bit more relaxed. And it may help you be a little more alert. And also you won't be so slow. <laughs> Some of my students that are beginner jazz piano players are, you know, pretty slow at first. And I'm like, come on, my friend, you know, uh, music is not going to wait for you. You've got to get some speed on it so it sounds like a song eventually. So um, then we go into, what would it look like if it were easy? Oh, gosh, it would seem peaceful. I would play it without uh, too much self-imposed pressure. It would just feel easy. And number nine, be willing to walk away. We do all run into blocks sometimes. We have good days, we have bad days. We want to maintain our habit of practicing, but we sometimes hit those brick walls and it's okay to walk away from the piano. Like literally just, you know, go get a carrot stick or a glass of water or something health food, right? Um, go out and, you know, see what kind of a day it is outside. Um, take a look at the mail that came. Do something completely different just for a moment. Then come back and see how it is. 
Uh, there's no reason to torture ourselves if we're not making progress. You want to make progress. It's not about quantity of practice. How many of us have got too much free time on our hands? No, I, I don't at all. It's all about optimizing my, my time and being efficient with things. So you don't want oodles and oodles of practice. You want the right amount of good quality practice. So that, you know, so be smart about it and uh, don't force it if it's just not happening for you at one practice session. And the little break can work wonders. You may feel better when you come back. And last but not least, number 10, practice songs. Even if you're just beginning to learn jazz piano and learning some basic chords, you still want to grab this fake book, open it to page 431, turn it right side up, and then play <laughs> Beer Barrel Polka. That's your song. Be sure to play this one, okay? Because it's a, it's a good one, good standard. Uh, no, you could play Hello Young Lovers, uh, you know, or whatever. But um, it is all about playing songs. And with scat singers, just to compare and contrast, uh, we also basically do you know, actual musical work after we scat. We learn exercises, we sing them, we do them, and then we improvise with an accompaniment, which is analogous to what you're doing in playing a song after you practice chords and voicings. Um, to compare and contrast with, for example, vocal improvisers or scat singers, every time we do exercises, we want to after it, spend a few minutes just improvising on a chord progression because we want to connect the practice with the music all the time and make that connection so it doesn't become a pedantic, boring exercise. So you're going to do the same type of thing by playing songs. You don't even need to play the melody, just play the chords, C chord, play a chord, C chord, play a chord, and walk your way through, but do it a little bit every time after you practice.